You know, and he said to go back to the root. And what the root is, it's really all about love. This whole universe, God in totality. Look at somebody and say, it's really all about love. Woo. And a subtitle, it, it, the, the scripture he gave is, let's say it together, John 3, 16. Come on. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish. Because it's all about him. That's deep right there. The revelation, I'm just believing. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, as I go forth in this word that your revelation will explode in our spirits. That we won't be the same as when we first walked in this place, but we will be changed. And the revelation of who you are and your love and how you manifested your love through this powerful man of God. For it's all really about love. We just give you the praise and all the honor and all the glory. It is only yours alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. <laughs> Amen. So we have our topic today. It's really all about love. And you know, as the Lord would just give me revelation after revelation, he said the root of it is love. And in the scripture, as he gave me, he said, for God so love. We're going to be dealing with two things today. One is love. Say love. Love. And give. And give. That's awesome. Love. Love. And give. Love. For God so loved the world, he gave yeah. his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Corinthians 5. 1 Corinthians 15, I'm sorry, 51 through 58. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I'm just going to say, Behold, I show you a mystery that we shall not all sleep but we shall be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Death is swallowed up in victory. I know a lot of us heard that scripture so many times and it's a mystery. A mystery, you know. Oh God, I got so much inside. I mean, the way he gave me that love and forgive. It's about forgiving too. We're gonna talk about forgiving today. Uh-oh. Behold, I show you a mystery that we shall not all sleep. This is only an earth suit, ladies and gentlemen. If you were to go to the moon, you would need to put on a moon suit, uh, whatever they wear up there, <laughs> so they'd be able to survive. So to enter into this ramp, see, you can't kill no spirit. You, everybody know that. You know, you cannot kill a spirit. Spirits don't die. They, you know, they move to different places. So this earth suit is going to be going back to what's his came. Hallelujah. But there's going to be a time, it shall be, he won't be sleeping, but he'll be changed in a twinkling of an eye. Let's go to Corinthians 5 and 8. Come around. I hear those Bibles moving all these Bible thumpers in here. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5 and 8 says, We are of good courage, rather to be absent from the body and to be at home with the Lord. See, these are promises. You know, right now we're in the room, if somebody were to die and they was totally rich and they had all this stuff and they left you all this money and all this, this jewels and stuff, but if you didn't open the wheel, you could be Paul. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So what's happening today, we're opening up the wheel and testament of the Lord Jesus Christ to figure out who we are in Him and what we have. You, you know, I, I, I am just, you know, God got our backs. And like it is a celebration of life, meaning that we're going to see him again. He is not in our past. He is in our future. The scripture says he's over the banisters of heaven and he can see everything that's going on. And he is cheering us on. Come on now, I don't ran my race, you can do it. Come on, let's run, let's keep doing this. Go to, to preach that gospel. Whatever your call it is, it's just not preaching. Just working at the postal service. And when you go to somebody, you know, giving them a letter with a smile. Hello? Amen, amen. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. I'm going to read some scripture for those that say, but you know, you didn't read no scripture. Let's go to 1 Thessalonians 4. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye shall sorrow not, 
even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again, even so them also sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So when Jesus cracked the sky, he's going to be bringing the saints with him. Amen? 16. I'm sorry, 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain. Now this is where I want to be, right here. Alive and remain. Will be of the coming of the Lord shall not prevail them which are asleep. We're going to be caught up to meet him. Amen. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the what? Shout. And with the voice of an archangel. And with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall what? Rise up first. And a lot of people say, well, why are they rising up first? Because they got the Father to come up to meet with us. So they're going to rise up first and we're going to all be caught up together. Amen? Amen. 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 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall not be caught, and then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So they shall ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another there with these words. You know, I was just sharing with my little niece, like my little niece moved in with me, and you know, she saw me studying last night, and uh, I was explaining to her about, you know, hey, I'm going to be redoing a funeral tomorrow, officiating a funeral, and you know, just kind of explain it to her. You say, this Jesus thing is real. This Jesus thing, it's something about this Jesus, this AD, this BC about Christ. This Jesus, is you're in this room and you don't know Christ is your Savior, this Jesus thing is real. See, this too shall pass, amen. Our matter will be greater than our former, even in the spirit. You know, he said, Jesus said, I'm going to go away and prepare a place for you. So where I am, you shall also be. Amen. So this, this, I was, I have a nine year old. I'm trying to explain the life to her. You know, she said, Oh, how sad. I'm going to give you some clinics to take with you. I said, No, because we're going to be celebrating. Amen. See, see, the thing is, and your grandmama and all these other people that passed it, and if you receive Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, they are not in your past. But you got something to look for. They're in your future. Hello? So this is a happy time. This is a rejoicing time. And you know, the, as the scripture talk about, this moment here on earth is just, a, not just so quick a vapor like compared to where our eternity is like. See, eternity, there is no time. It's just now. Can you imagine that? No time. It is just now. That's powerful. You know, I had an experience where God took me out of my body and he took me out of time. I'm writing a book about the supernatural. He took me out of time and he put me into eternity. And in this eternity, I saw my mother. And she looked glorious. She was beautiful. She was sparkling. She the perfect age, the perfect figure. And she said, she had just passed about a month after that. And she said, go tell them that I am very, very happy. See, my brother was grieving. He had got on hair on and they just tearing their heads off and everybody going crazy because my mama done died. And she said, go tell them. I said, I'm very, very happy. Now, you know, when I got that, I, I'm writing this book and, and my, my publisher said, well, where were you and what time did it happen or what day? I said, baby, it ain't even no time. I mean, the transition was so supernatural, it ain't even words on this earth to explain what heaven holds, what eternity holds. I mean, to be taken out of this earthly realm and, and snatched up into eternity. I mean, it's more real than this. It's all it's real. I said, I'm willing to die. Put my life on the line how real it was. It wasn't a dream. It wasn't a vision. I don't know what my body was doing. Yeah. But I do know, I can't say it happened on the, uh, in the morning, at the night. It was just that supernatural. It wasn't no time. Next thing I know, bam, if I was there, it just, it's unexplainable. That's why it's supernatural. Wow. Hello. Yeah. And so when I went and told her, she, she said she's very, 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 very happy. And as I told that, the Lord said, as I, as I speak, that burdens are going to be lifted. See, I was brought up. 
See, I know demons are real too, because see, they take personalities on as your loved ones. I had an experience with that too. So I said, Father, wait a minute here, because I know the devil is the devil, and I don't know what happened to me, but he said, go to my word. Who was on the mountain of Mount Fig uh, Configuration. There you go. Who was there? Jesus, Moses, Elijah. Was Moses dead? Was he alive during the time Jesus was there? Well, had he had died? Yes. Hello? Yes. Elijah, was he dead and yes. had died? Yes. He said, look, that was your mama. It is possible. Now, you don't go around looking for dead folks. To say, Can I say? They don't happen like that. Because a familiar will, spirit will take on that and, you know. But I see demonic forces. I had an experience with that side, too. But I'm just here to encourage you that, see, he's not in our past. He's in our future. And, you know, some of you, the Lord told me to tell the daughters, especially, and the loved ones, you know. Well, I wish Daddy was here. He could see me graduate or my grandson graduate. I wish he was here to do this. And he is here. Amen. He more here than you think. Come on now. Hello? There, scriptures talk about... Come on, let's go over there. What's this lady talking about? The scriptures talk about what great cloud of witnesses. Yes. Witness means you're seeing something. Come on now. You know it's something if you're a witness. Anybody been a witness in a court? That's right. That's right. What great cloud. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great cloud of witnesses. And what is it? Let us lay aside every weight and every sin which doeth easily beset us and let us run with patience. They tell us what they're doing. Run, y'all! <coughs> lay aside that weight. <coughs> lay aside that sin. Come on, you got this. The prize that's here. Uh, you, this, that, that, that little incident you just had don't mean nothing. That sickness in your body, it ain't nothing. So you can't pay your... your whatever you may be go, going through. Come on, you can make it. You can get through this. the Lord gave me to give you you want to love somebody love yourself love your sister love your mama love your uncle hallelujah let's pour out the love on your neighbor love 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 never fails but you cannot have love let's go back to John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave. Wait a minute, hold up. Let's put some God in it. You got to give. For give. God loved us so much that he for gave. He gave. Now, so you better earn respect back to me. Well, if you earned it, you ain't gave nothing. If they got
you choose to forgive. Yes. Thank you, Lord. It's a for, F-O-R, for, 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 give. You before, give. You got to forgive. Huh? You got to give. You got to give. You got to give. It's all about give. But God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, shall have everlasting. It all ties together. The root, love, give, forgive. It's all about love and forgive. That's the root. Love, give. That's what love does. It gives. You got to have some give in it. Because you ain't got no give in it. You done earned it. There ain't no forgiveness. So God has challenged us all in this room to forgive. I wish I would have, could have, should I, but I don't, it don't matter. Because that will block your blessing. I was thinking, I, 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 and why you holding stuff? Them person, our fans over there sleeping and eating and drinking and partying and you stand up and sweating and cussing. Yeah. Hello. Because you just don't want to give. But you want to be given too. Well, this is a beautiful service today. Thank you, Jesus. So two of the girls gave me three things for you. Number one, he said to you, and the loved ones, and the family and friends, but especially for his girls, he said, when you love one another, you are loving your dad in the flesh. I wish I could show my daddy some love. Well, you can. Um, <coughs> love each other. Mm -hmm. You lost your mother, you lost your father, go find you a relative. Mm -hmm. That's right. Got some blood in them. Okay. Oh, I love my mother. I love my dad. What? Okay. Why don't I love my sister Benita? If you want to love mom and daddy, that's them. Mama plus daddy equal you. Bonita. Wow. <laughs> Love them. Right. Loving the seeds. And I didn't make praise the Lord. The second thing he said, I reiterate, he says, oh, I wish my dad was here. Believe it. He ain't missing nothing. Ain't that beautiful? Your loved ones are not, and that's for everybody in this room, your loved ones are not missing anything. Because they're looking over the banisters of heaven and they are cheering you on. Run that race. You can do it. Amen. 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 The third thing the Lord told me for the, for the girls was your dad is not in your past. He is definitely in your future. Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise for that. where they are, amen, where there's no sickness, where there's no disease, there's no tears, where it's always hello and God is the light of the world, where there's peace that pass all understanding, where if they had a choice to come back here, they said, uh-uh, uh-uh, I'm with the presence of God Almighty, over here with the patriots, oh, I love y'all, but I don't love you that much. You know, anyway, praise the Lord. So this is a little part of the time I would like to just do a little commit, committal of the body. And what I am going to do in this prayer is ask God to anoint, spiritually anoint this body for burial. Ooh, catch that. The anointing for burial. The Lord gave me that. Father, as you gave it to me, just play some drums, nice and low, and just nice. Oh. Mm. Thank you, God. Father, as you showed me, a committal for Frederick, Maurice, 
part for the body, dust to dust, and ashes to ashes. For God, I ask you the anointing oil to be over and through this flesh where his spirit has moved on. But we know in your word that when the trump of God blow, he will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And he'll be one of the ones first to rise. So therefore, Father, we commit his body for burial. For as much as God in his intimate love and wisdom has permitted our dear brother, Frederick Maurice Clark, to fall asleep in Christ, we do tenderly commit his body to the ground and commit his eternal spirit to God and his son Jesus Christ and the kingdom of heaven and a sure hope for that joyful resurrection day when the Lord Christ Jesus himself in that same light manner that he ascended shall descend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.